This season on Kevatu. Fatu. Oli. in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Bibliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today, and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable, and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Assalamu alaikum. Padi on hal bismillah. Kirfa tu programo tu nka min kale jang. GRTS Aramiso Aramisa. Aning mol mini alonko. Eben jibe kang YouTube ota ni Facebook ngal bismillah programo tu. Kom ka kenya min drong Aramiso Aramiso Oli. Nga mol nati nang mini alonko. Nga mga fonya min drong me political season la kono. Kirfa tu season four nga yele pur political season lom. Ngafu loko to nyato nya jamming election or politician or drone ni wole be kwa kira. Bairi, mbe wati le kono banko la Karola, mwole be banko njini ka. Bari mwole 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 banko njini, fuke njini nka. Ituli mwole soto banko dingole. Ngafu loko, ni yiko Dr. Sise wo, yiko Adama Baro wo, yiko Maifati wo, yiko Halifa Sala wo. Ye mwole 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 fodron, ibe ngani ya kendo lo soto banko ye. Ibe lafta ka banko njini, pulka gambia dingole se wande, kato gambia dingole kontandi. Bari, Abe soto la silo mina wale fatata. Itolbe mune kera momo la hamo mwiminti wale fatata. Wala na kumayata baake ka politician wale soto jang. Binga Dr. Sise soto jang. Ngamira nata jane komantu. Bari nino sinya foloti. Kavirin siye ya kere kere ya ke la presidential candidate. Yani flag biara. Doctor, welcome to Kirfati one more time. Ambarka baake fatu. Mbe tantula mbe jaira mbe kontona baake baake fangke nila co-host. Ya. Gamsel data now even better. Enjoy 20% extra data on all Gamsel data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gamsel data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yaibor menu and choose your data bundle now. Gamsel Gamsil data is fast, lasts longer, and very reliable. Gamsil yai borom. Oli, te doke si selen fi ande. How manak mo bine ni wah ne dize mo fif ni feka ko? Je paleba. Kom ga e ni dize mo fif ni feka len. How manak mo fumo gini? 
Fatu December 5th mom. Nye kufi nyo dal, kufi tog dal. Wangane ting nyo invite. December 5th nyo dem. Nani tila, na interview la. Nyo yeah. dem celebrate dal. Why December 5th mom la nyo di har. Yeah. Komo moko de o herek. Sani karta rek. Mone kasi digante. Nyi nga hamne nyo udreo mi. Adreo mi. Mm -hmm. Sani karta bo nak mune kalo hamne. Fa am solo bu ba ha ba ha ba ha ba. Ba pre tamit nyo gina program yini. Ba na benga hamne. Nyi nyi dinen si gina mune gisen bo pa di dem register. Because sa yin fito ge mom fok ñu wax waxi registration because suñu register wul mom sani carte bi mom amu ñëre because carte bi lañu am pour sani pour ñi nga xamne ñu ngi ut réew mi ñu mëne ko am so ñu welcome dr sissé rek waxtaan ak mom comme ni nga waxé since bi ko sié défé um presidential candidate flag bearer bi um ñewut kër faatu so fu nekk né dafa ñëw sax ci right time because we're talking about december 4th elections so ku nek ya nga set ni nga duggé ci bir nit ñi muy grass route bi la muy media bi la muy everywhere rek ñu nga set ñu ñoo solicité votes pour ñi nga xamné ñoo nekk citizens of this country ñu mu neena sané so doctor welcome once more time né def olé a doctor comme comme ni kabir ngi bismillah follow 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 ñi congratulate a bay di kabir ni ci tanu jang waato you came as a ca member but um, officially uh, bi telom si ela nyaatum ko ti andum fa nang etele la candidate ti pour december 4 doctor dum december 4 abe lola le bang faate lola wala nyenta senaya la folo bay re si e tombo na bar fa be lola am be lola la ni ala sonta ni ala sonta yes andum doctor pare ta fe o fe mu kala kala ti je aba be tu le je ay lo yes ni wala na ndum politik ko kono ah man ndum politik ko kono pour kana dron kan no iske ndum dal pour kana ka change fi na and the only way we change feel na wolon ko ye agenda da agenda mi nan ko gambe di gambia ding senela kara mun to tala marseto muso karana karambalo ke muso si wo si ibe fanjalo agenda to ko nyin agenda na tara ya tamanda nyama ya fo nyaming a mbem fanjala banko ko le banko fanan na fa mbaso to le amanke bin tol tronti de bari sama fanan dingol fanan agenda nyin mi alon ko mbe gambe de la nyari de pour sama Mm -hmm. Bawa ni demographic ju be ikon na population is doubling every 16 years. Mm -hmm. Abu ko 2050 metara 5 million. Kabang ko dun doku pur 5 million uh, bang ko dingo. Ibu ke bato for 2050 years yo doku kumasi. Ibu ko doka ke bile. Bin nyanta taram be wo doku wala. Kunun nem bi eh, bin nyanta ka mil ka nung gang ka bo jata kende a bunda for tanko bunda for karango bunda for seno bunda. Mm -hmm. Ane funding ke la doku bunda. Wo do ko nyanda kela nung kunun ne, esa e bi ngo tara jang, bar un foti wo do ko mangke kunun, bi abu ko momo a sita state house 2021, do ko fula le bi bo lo, ka bang ko do ko pir na pur na bi na fa, ka je ko bang ko di wo bang ko ding, ye fan je bang ko ko no, momo sa sa ta, esa e jara no a sa ta re mang ta do la jang, e be da ira ding kira lo, din di wo ding ding, e ta kara mung ken do to, ba wo ngaje lo ka mangke silo tin te ding o. Iya ta karang bungo to mialong ko abe karang karang kendo sura la jele ba kodo bente bulle ba ite dingo mialong ko telbe fonyi wala jar e dingo ta karang mua re karang mungkendo sura la jee abe ko alto la start in life amang ke kelin ite dingo la chance sura jee pur alaf ta kela minti abe kela ite dingo te kela te kaje ko fana ngau fana mbai sene la lungi di mai seno ke gambe sa fana danyi no kurang ngobunda e sa jenga jubi en tol si mune kono pur na kurang ngai tama e sa mo mo dawo da e kurang ngosi di jisena ngoso to ba nga reporto jela from the uh, multiple indicator cluster survey yeah. ka fo gambia ke mo ke me uh, tan uh, tan woro lo ni lulo be man jisena ngoso to ibuka jisena nga ming ya o mo kulti mi alon ko ending bakele o mbo fanan bela nyaming ani ko ko tanul ani mo fanan kaji ko fanan sa mo fanan funding kel mebina mo ndo ko si falbe sula la wala ngaw do ko ko ma se sani den jel be sula la karam bo ngola no zeris kulo la mo sula lobital jel la ke ba jel be sula jata kende ala o be plan ka mo sula la si la jel la o be ka ke sañ le e saaje a ci sonia so wala na do ko nga ko yata le wala na ndun da poli ko no kaw agenda ta ka landi ka wafi gambe ni ngala jiko soton to e carte dinna nga ta si nga do ko ke um so kabir lumine to mo as flag bearer woni bi tema nga min je wolon si be banko tamakan a kabir fi ndi da banko di wol yere si fi nyaadi le ani fanan ni ma mistake nga mi raf bi itele funding ke yata candidate ul beto no minu lafta ka banko nyini ini funding ke temo be nyaadi la ani mune ya tinna ko gambirol nyanta la la ka funding ke min be ko ete ka banko di la ka to nyato ye ko funding ke balo ka kandile ni di la la mara nyaase kandino kom mutamin kono muna tinna gambirol nyanta la la ka banko di ta a mo banko di ngol ti folo 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 andum fana nga do ko ke gambia ene eh ndemu funding ke di ko funding ke funding ke gambia jang 
ngulu ra jannan kulu ra jannan akara moke jannan uh, mambo bulu mambo family to family miyalo ko asotole wati nambara ra bake fo nakara mo nata tinyambulo ndata siralio nata ndata to babu do nini ndro ko funding ke kanyini ndro kenyame so funding ke le fengo feng balu e fengo feng feel nde fala nga balu le bari nga nakara mo to babu do nga lahiru ta ko ndela londo ni ata ramang gambia nafa o ramang nafa asoto Nata nebi ala fonga londo ke fonga pigi so tefotu babol konyo ko ite saya raka ngo danta dame ma kamo danta dame ma kara ngo banta janne ba ro londo danta dame ma na fa a mo to nyima dinna a ko da nyima dinna ndi ngo le raka rambo ken doldo ba rinta la bangko ndi ngo le gambia ning afrika ni saya buka ji sana ngo soto i buka ni sasa te buka jara no i be konkoring ko danta la kara ngo ma ngo aman na fa soto ba nan si tanan jang ta ngo na ko le aring nda raka rang lo inivasi do to mo be ala inivasi do be nyame sa buka ngo bangko sanji tang be wo la ji nga nga ni fanan soto le nga bala fa soto nga hakilo fanan soto ba ni londo so rema hakilo soto aman na fa so londo buke na fa ni londo so rema bala fa soto ila londo man na fa soto o don tinga o soto le eh andum fanan banko la problem ko fa nyamen be ring nyenke kandido di nga banko yaay le nde nga presidé ya nyino de nyaari wala banko ni be doku nyino la banko di ngol bulu ke saaf wa amul ka fa man sa ma fa ni man sa ten nyende e mu nya don ko le de wolon ko moto moto nakata komo ke len ce que drive wood amanko wood drive wala fisia dan bete de wala te lono soto bete de bari atele moto no njikita la ko ni nga baro diala asi muro tanko de en sembo fota dula oto be banko nyini kan fonsi ya ngata banko di ngok nga jibe balu kan nyame ni ko biye kara fa banko lo munade alla balu alla kara ngo bunda di ngol kara ngo bunda alla jada ken de fon din ke la doku alla naful ala kara fa ma ndo ko wala nyini bi olon presede ya nyinode ila tanko ni la soute be sino la ya je ko se wuli so mandata ko te kele la o do janding be futala je fonsi ta ngaje banko dongol ko balu nyame problem o be mun tole du mal le solata de maro la andu nga finde mal le karanje ba be ndalal ngaje ko banko di jamal be be jomu ya problem o le saka santoto mu so be be na ko te bataring e man de maro soto je se na be bataring e man de maro soto fonding kel be jandandin saate ko no e man do ko soto so to ngaje ko na nyim banko ta ngaji ko fana sanji talu ni woro wula na mom yalla ko wolle be rural gambia be carte fala saw sanji rural se be carte fala man say kunda ni ka fa ngof na yadi masa kunda la ya na mojo e carte fay ya luwano bari masa kunda mo le sama nyin satel do kira sa do jiti je quarante je l'hopitante je karambonti je silati je fonding ke man du ko so fa ngof na ti je abuko man dar gambe ban konka ikara sa do kabada ikatta malay si bulo ko no foy camera foy fili telefo man dar gambe ko tenke ana be gambe janne ndo ko le nyanta ka ban sañ ba o gambe ana fulo sotole ay bon ko dingol sotole a be le sotole sam pour ka ko gambe fanam bi nga do ku nga randi si do kan ba ro fo kambe ngose ken to nga kambe ba o isa ha kilo sotole nyaw nya ya lo ndo sotole nyaw nya ya mira ken do sotole nyaw nya yeke president ngoti nin kambe ngom sotole ban ko kono ela do ko kol yale bulla wana wati wati ndol kam min foron ko fonsi kambe fonsi kambe ni won ding do mo mo keta president di bi kelo siata guru siata diamo siata ite do ko kenola an no fo kambe ngo sike bi be wote mbola do do wote mbola o limbe wote mbola um doctor nak dafa fatu dafa commencer fu important mo ne mom ñewul pour make noise yeah and we are talking about already we've got about 17 to 18 parties we've got other um, independent aspirants as well so we're looking at around 20 to 22 now so of course there's some who are definitely noise makers mm. and there's some as he said he's not part of the noise makers but um i just wanted to know you know gise this whole congested political field because this is small gambia um the voter registration from what we expecting this year so but everybody will people are projecting around a million maximum 1.2 that's what we're looking at so with 1.2 million registered voters and this is just a projected number we're talking about 18 to 20 political parties. political parties aspirants you know and all of that how would you how do you see that congested um, situation and how does um, ca come into play because already we have some parties who are very structured who have a very huge support base um there's nothing wrong with new parties coming in as well because of course there's new voter registration as well there's people who have always been independent minded there's people who would buy into these manifestos and move from one one party to to another but being that congested and having parties that are already structured how does ca fit into that and what's your take on this whole congestion well i agree with you uh, the field is crowded 
uh, partly because the democracy that we have. Um, but again, having 25, 26 political aspirants, political parties, including independent candidates, doesn't mean that we'll have 26 candidates yeah. on the ballot box. Mm. Yeah. Iran has 600 candidates that aspire to run in their elections. That's elections is today, Iran 600. Only five are on the ballot box. Um, even though you cannot stop how many people aspire to become president yeah. or register their political parties. But I had always engaged the IEC to see what mechanisms can we do to filter out frivolous yeah. aspirants. Um, Senegal did it. Senegal had almost 45 to 50 aspirants in mm -hmm. their last elections. They had this endorsement model where they have to get a certain number of yeah. um, and, um, signatures. signatures before. So, and they wanted yeah. to five. Mm -hmm. So I think that is what the IEC has to do. And so for us, at CA level, we are focusing on what we are doing. We cannot stop people from yeah. registering political parties or mm. expressing their interest to run for president in this country. And like she said, um, everybody has a good impact. Yeah. Everybody thinks that they are, they are what it takes to transform this mm -hmm. country. When it comes to the issue of uh, structured parties, I think if you look at the media landscape, mm -hmm. when Kate Fatu was coming to the scene, there were already established media houses in this mm -hmm. country. But she came and she made a niche for herself. So um, in France, uh, when Macron was winning, the left and the right were established political parties. Nobody thought that Macron would come and beat them in that election. So when Macky Sall was winning in Senegal in 2012, yeah. Abla was established. Yep. Itano Jengs, Mustafa Nyasis, Idrissa Sex, he came and won the elections. So for me, what is important is that um, I cannot decide who wins these elections. And like she said, Parties are saying that they'll be in, de in at State House on December 5th. Yep. I say the people will be in State House on December 5th. Mm. The, peop the person that the people elect will be on in State House. It could be Dr. Sisi, it could be Hussein Odabo, it could be Halifa Salah. The most important thing is that the people decide who governs them in the next five years. Yeah. The most important thing is that there is stability and peace and prosperity, whoever comes. It would not make any sense if I'm elected as president and I develop myself and I become prosperous, but the whole country is still lacks in, I don't want to be president of that country. I want to be president where there is change, where there is prosperity, where we see that country is moving forward. So for us at CA level, we're into the scene. Um, we have our agenda. We've diagnosed the very many problems of this country. We've prescribed solutions to these problems. Like I said, not only today's problems, but also preparing for tomorrow. We've looked at the demographic trends look at industrial trends, we look at economic trends, we looked at everything. We know, we have an outlook of how the country will be like in 2050 if we don't really take critical decisions. So that is the agenda we are selling to the government people. And on December 4th, the government people will decide. It's like LUMO. Mm -hmm. When you come to the LUMO, everybody is you sell. At the end of the LUMO, if it's only one person, it's good will be bought. And then we pack our bags until the next LUMO. We have 2026, we have 2031. Uh, politics is not like you have to come for the first time and think that you are going to win. Uh, you, some people will do it for the rest of their lives, they'll never win. We've seen candidates, they've looked for it for 28 years, they never won. Yeah. We've seen people for the first time, they won. Yeah. We've seen people 15 years, they, they won. So what we have control over is the message we are sending to the government people and the political strategies we are putting in place. The people now will decide who governs them in 2021 20, okay. and then uh, let us all accept that that is the verdict of the people and let's support that person any way we can for the country to move forward. These policies that you guys have, have in mind and these agendas, because you've talked about the agriculture, you keep mentioning the water si uh, condition and situation in rural Gambia. Um, how would it be implemented? Because these are very nice on paper and these are very nice for you to even to talk about because these are issues that we all know about. These are issues that we all hear, but the difference is how will it be done? Specifically the water issue. Okay, that seems to be Is very it the one or exactly um, which in, one? In general, just in general. CA you know, there are many sectors that are, but like every sector has been yeah. failing in Gambia today. From agriculture, we've not been able to feed ourselves since independence. There is so much food insecurity in this country. You've seen that there is rising inflation in this country. Uh, because there is global inflation. Yeah. So when there's global inflation, and inflation even starts at the Chinese warehouse at the entrance. Once the goods leave, the prices has gone up. So when we buy these goods from outside, we buy them with that inflation and bring it in because we don't have a productive base. And COVID-19 has laid bare our vulnerability and our dependency um, on the outside. Therefore, it is time for us to think how do we really, how do we really enhance our productive base. 
Um, so we need to, that's agriculture, and then we have energy. Also, we are energy insecure. 100% of our energy generated today is using heavy fuel, which is not sustainable. It is not good for the environment. We think we want to go green uh, before 2050 to ensure that all our energy generated in this country is used, is, is generated using indigenous sources, green, renewable energy, solar, wind, biogas, um, and, and water. And that is one. We can come into the details how we are going to implement that. But we can explain. The agriculture especially. How are you going to? Because a lot of us are implement, uh, interested in that. Especially uh, Gambia, like I've said, the Gambia have signed so many protocols. The Mobutu um, uh, committing 10% yeah, 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 of your budget to, to, to agriculture. We have never implemented in Gambia. Some parties have committed. But I've said that these parties, when they talk to you, they'll say, we will do this. But once they're there, we don't see these things being implemented. How is CA going to help develop the agricultural sector to to be able to get Gambia at least you know produce locally grown f food M we have a lot of mangoes yeah, here yeah. we can do rice production in the Gambia because the pandemic you have said have affected the whole world the reason why rice and everything is on increase is because the world market itself is is is, is high but what is CA government going to do to make sure even though there is high prices in the world, Gambians will not be that, that affected. When it comes to agriculture, we have specific plans. Mm. Overall, broadly speaking, our plan is to shift from subsistence agriculture to large-scale commercial agriculture mm. by investing um, through using uh, public-private partnerships. I know government cannot do it alone. Yeah. Even in the West, governments don't engage in agriculture. What they do is they create the enabling environment to attract global capital into the country and then the private sector will like invest in agriculture. What we can do is to just do that, to create the enabling environment. One of the enabling environments is to ensure that there is a, an institute for agriculture. Our farmers are still using the backward way of primitive agriculture. And that they should be exposed to more modern techniques of agriculture in terms of seed, seeds, in terms of fertilizers and so on and so forth. Also moving away from seasonal to year-round agriculture. Mm -hmm. Gambia has a lot of enough water. We have enough sky water that we can store and use for irrigation purpose. We have enough surface water. The River Gambia has fresh water site. We have enough underground water. So for me, I see no reason why we cannot go for um, year-round agriculture. But at, at the same time, also to make agriculture attractive, uh, to provide incentives for people who want to become farmers in terms of tax breaks, because agriculture will also provide employment for our people, mm -hmm. young, especially young Gambians, to tell them that agriculture is, um, is, is feasible and make sure that we have, they have access to cash, because access to cash is something, because agriculture is, is, uh, is capital intensive, it's a capital intensive venture. You want to buy the machines, obviously, because you don't want to use horses and, and cows anymore. You want to use mm -hmm. machines, proper machines. You need the land, you need the technology for the fertilizers, you need technology for the seeds. These are capital intensive. So it's about encouraging young people. What government can do is to create an environment, access to cash, access to land, um, also tax breaks and incentives, and they encourage young people to come and invest in, especially those in diaspora. I know Gambians who are in the diaspora who, sit, who has access to enough capital. They want to come and invest, but the environment is not, is, is not right. So for us, that is what we are going to do, is to create that environment, to attract private sectors, uh, investors, uh, foreign direct investment, global capital to come in and invest in our agricultural sector. Um, okay, the capital, very, very important. We know the economy of the country. Gambia is not a very strong economic country. So all these projects, they're great. All these ideas are excellent. But then we need to look at the economic aspect of it as well. I understand we would have the private, you know, public um, partnership and everything. But how would government or your government, how would you guys um, sustain, I would say, because sustainability is very key, mm -hmm. If in terms of the economic situation of the country as well, because we need to understand all these projects and to implement them, the finances are important. It's, it's number one. And then nobody mm -hmm. debt debt is quite high. So, so CA, what would you learn in the debt? At the same time, you can finance the government of these most of these projects. How would well, those two work? Two, two key things. Yeah. Save and invest. Yeah. So uh, we're not, we're not saving as yeah. well. Uh, right now, I'll mm -hmm. go start with savings. Yeah. There's somewhat leakage in government. Yeah. Government has huge potential to raise revenues by diversifying its revenue sources. Let's start with the SOEs, state-owned enterprises. They are supposed to make money for government, and they have the potential to make billions of dollars for government. 
but they are not. Norway has gone insolvent since 2011. They cannot pay their debt. Gambia government subsidizes and pay their debts for them. Imagine that money is used to, um, to, to in, in, inject uh, in, in, in social projects. GRA is supposed to make money. They give GRA a, 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 a paltry target to say $1 billion is every month. But GRA is the potential to make over that money if the leakages, are, if the GRA is reformed and made to be more efficient. Look at the port, huge potential. It's not living up to its point. It is underperforming. Civil aviation, even um, even even GRA, even no social security, even Gantel Gamsel. Perhaps so. When you see a government comes to power, we have to see where can we save. Office of the President. Your budget is almost a billion dollars. It's almost eight hundred million, six to six hundred to eight hundred million dollars. It is unsustainable. We we'll have to reform the office of the president and make sure that we cut spending at the office of the president. We see the leakage goes to the eighty percent of our budget goes to servicing government salaries. Travel, allowances, you know, Poor. mobile phones, utilities, mm -hmm. petrol, and so on and so forth. Cars, it's not sustainable. You need to make sure that we have a lean, efficient government that provides services to the people and invested in people. When it comes to investment, today, 200% of our debt, uh, our, our public debt is 200% of internally generated revenue. That is too much. It's not sustainable. But the bad part is that when this government borrows, they don't borrow to invest, they borrow to Consume. consume. Just know if you start borrowing money from the bank every day, you're not investing in your kids' education. You're not investing in their food, uh, their nutrition. You're not investing in their health. You're not investing in your agriculture, your backyard, your garden. But you're just using it to boom by and hell and to you become bankrupt yep. at some yep. point. Mm -hmm. So we need to, when we borrow money and when we get seed money through grants, we need to invest that money back so that it brings us money. We need to restructure the entire SOEs. We need to look at which ones are viable, which ones are not viable. Which one should we really privatize totally? Which one should we restructure? I mean, like proper restructuring, so they start making money for government. But also look at government itself, how it is run. Where do we save money? Which embassies do we need really need to? The world is moving towards multilateral diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Well, embassies overall, those embassies were created in post-colonial Africa to reward political stalwarts. This is not time for that. We need to really look at which embassies do we close? Where do we save money? In government, which ministries do we need to change? We have 18 ministries. Some ministries overlap. Some ministries are not fit for purpose. Some ministries have been created in the 80s to solve 1980s problems. We live in the digital age. You can use you can use the digital media to do more governance and reduce this bureaucratic red tape and thereby saving money. The government government employs 46,000 people. Almost 18,000 is in the security services. Or we spend almost almost 700 million in defense. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So we really need to have to look at where do we save money. Where do you seal so there are no leakages in terms of corruption and graft? Recently, I've read a story by Malagan. Yeah. The only widow $2.2 million mm -hmm. to pay for a flight that brought COVID mm -hmm. organics, which is which gathering is dust, us free. which is not using. Yeah. So, so obviously, the, the, the sleaze, the graft, the, the, we living beyond our means as a government is causing us problems. But more so, borrowing money in politically expedient projects and not investing that money into education. Gambia needs to do one thing, to attract foreign direct investment, to attract global capital, to make sure we create the right environment so that production farms come and have production bases in this country. Why can't uh, Daimler Benz uh, come and produce Benz parts in this country? Tech companies coming and having tech hubs in this country. Gambians are smart. And English language is something that we speak properly. So the chances are there, but we need to create an environment, make sure that the energy sector is good, there is enough electricity, they have a knowledge-based economy whereby every government has at least that level of education. So when investors come, they don't have to worry about training, they don't have to worry about electricity, but also there is security and stability, but also the legal frameworks are right. So that investors can be sure that their capital it will be safe in Gambia and they have confidence in the, in the market. But that is something that a gov serious government can think of and do. And that is how we are going to make money. But also we have other non-taxable, because Gambia government has two kind of revenues, taxable, non-taxable. Taxable are income tax, corporate tax, um, and so on and so forth. But the non-taxable are ID cards, passports. Look at what we do with Semlex. Mm -hmm. How much are we making money <laughs> with Semlex? Look at the $20 we pay at the airport upon entry. How much money is going to the internal revenue? How much money of Semlex ID cards is going to internal revenue? Passports, how much is going to internal revenue? The driving licenses, how much is going to... Who said we cannot create the software to make our own passports and licenses and take control of our resources and ensure that we make money from that? But that is not happening. But all of these you're talking about required radical leadership. 
uh, we have to restructure our civil service uh, because I mean I think our biggest problem as a country is the is the civil service it's the human being itself uh, because all of these things you're saying I, I believe even Dr. Sisi, who has all these ideas, if he's in state house, without the proper people around, without restructuring our civil service, without restructuring our public institutions, you will not be able to effect a lot of these things. How are you going to effect all of these with this kind of civil service? And also, be careful, you, as a politician, I, I mean, I do remember there was a time uh, when they talked about um, downsizing certain institutions in the country. And then people started telling the president, oh, you have to be careful, you know, your political interest, you have to be careful because they will go against you. So politicians look at their interest instead of looking at the public interest. Are you going to be that type of politician? Because at the end of the day, you cannot achieve any of this without that radical leadership, taking people away, making sure the right people are, in the, are there. Thinking about cutting down institutions, um, ministries or embassies, people are going to lose jobs. And how are you going to do that? Well, that's what they call RRR. You retrench, you retrain, and you reintegrate. Yeah. When they say downsize, it doesn't mean that people are going home uh, to starve. Yeah. It means that you have to reform the entire institutions. I wouldn't use the word radical. I would use strong leadership. We need strong mm. leadership to build these strong institutions. Okay. And politics is, I mean, you have a legacy. I mean, for me, winning elections is not import, much more important than making so that every gamma lives a dignified life. So when we want to say we want to really restructure the civil service, we are going to retrench, retrain, reintegrate. It means that if you are in particular ministry and we see that you are structurally redundant because of the changes, we have to give you an opportunity to retrain yourself and then we reintegrate you into other sectors. There are many sectors that, especially the private, if, if we promote the private sector led growth in this country, there are many opportunities abound. We are really underperforming in this country. We're not really, really, um, we're not really tapping the potential of this country. Just look at the transportation sector. There are jobs available in the, in, the, in, the river, in the river transportation sector. There are jobs available in the recreation industries, in art, in music, in sports. Jobs abound. See, the civil service cannot absorb everyone. The security cannot absorb. There are many other opportunities whereby once we open those opportunities for people, the people to may have jobs there. The civil service should be lean, efficient, using technology. This is 21st century civil uh, governance. But the current status says because of politics, you know, if you do, you're going to lose. No. Just, you have to do radical changes. You have to do those changes and make sure that the end justifies, that is leadership. The end justifies, the, at, the end, at the beginning, many will, people will make noise and la 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 la. We saw it in the 80s when Gambia was having problems economically. The IMF came with their structural adjustment programs. But they had to implement it because it was there was no choice for the Jawara government. Many people were laid off. People went home. Not only Gambia, but all over Africa. When many African governments could not pay their debts, IMF said, well, you have to do this. You have to also do austerity measures. You have to retrench. You have to do this. That was even more radical. What we are going to do is not to tell you, no, go home and sit and starve. No, we'll always find a place to put you, to retrain you. It's going to be an overhaul of the entire system, a paradigm shift in governance, in the way we understand governance, in also the way we understand politics and development. And this is our only chance. Because um, if we don't change this country now for the next generation, we'll hand over a country that is not prepared for the generation to come. And that will be a travesty on our part. Um, recently, we have seen that there was, there was an article that I read where rural Gambia poverty level is at 33%. Um, I haven't really seen politicians talking about the poverty level in the Gambia. They do talk about their agendas on agriculture, health, and all of that. Fine. All of that combined, again, it's somehow linked to the poverty level. But I would just like to know what CA would do in trying to address this poverty level that, because we're the talking about 33% mm -hmm. of rural Gambia having one meal a day. And, I mean, that is just... To, to even read it, you, 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 you get sad about it. And these so, are um, the people you know, who vote, who go out and Elect vote. people, yes. They don't go out. The people around yeah. here, we're busy doing our business and looking for money. So I would like to know what yeah. CA so would I do to you, address like, that. Like I told you, 57 years, people have been voting, especially rural Gambia. Yeah. They have nothing, nothing, okay. absolutely nothing. What we need to do in the short term is to initiate social safety nets. No family should go, no child should go to sleep hungry in yeah. this country. We have the resources, we have the potential. But we are not just prioritizing. We don't know where our priorities are. Imagine, look at all this fleet of government vehicles. 
Just look at 200 million dollars is, is was spent 2019 to maintenance government vehicles. Look at all this fleet of government vehicles with all the fuel they consume. So it's our priorities, making sure that we are not investing rightly, we are not investing in our people. And we are going to create uh, social safety nets to make sure that nobody falls below the poverty line by giving them hand, uh, 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 support. States, uh, the state has to support them. But also making sure that the children have access to education, access to nutrition, um, especially good nutrition. So for that, we have plans for that in terms of how we are going to support not only proper families, but also people with special needs, people, people living with disabilities. There are those who are very vulnerable. That is our approach. We believe in government. We believe in the market as, a, as the most effective way of generating wealth. But we think the government has to come in to redistribute that wealth in accordance with the principles of fairness and solidarity. And that is why, we're, that is why we are coming. It means that government has to raise, we have to wealth create wealth. By creating wealth, that wealth will not be spent in government vehicles. Like I said, 80% of the budget goes to feeding government. Imagine if we cap it to 40% and the 60% go back, goes back to the people. In fact, today I mentioned this at the press conference, that it is sad that 24th century, some families have only one meal a day. Um, that is sad in the 24th century, my kid and your kid, will not go to this, they will not get access to the same level of education yeah. within the same jurisdiction. It is, it is unfair. Yeah. So once we create equal opportunities for every child, we make sure that we, have, we, in, we, we initiate uh, social safety net schemes for people who are really below, that at least they increase standard of living, make sure that salaries are paid right, um, and then making sure that the young people have jobs. We invest in social services like education, like health. I think everything will be fine. But once we are not doing that, we are not investing in the right places. We don't know our priorities. Uh, we are spending more on things that are so frivolous and have no positive, positive impact on the average Gambian. And that is why that mindset has to change. Speaking about health, health is very, very key and important. <coughs> but then we need to understand in Gambia, health is free, pretty much. But then free health system. What health? Which one is free? Um, it's pretty much free because they're not really. It's, a, it's, it's not free, but it's, it's <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, people. it's pretty much free, <laughs> right? The, the amount of money that is being charged, I mean, some twenty-five dollars is just to go. Ten dollars is here and there, but health is—it cannot be free if you want to have a very good health system. I Some don't agree with that. Free? No, doctor. Wherever you have free, free doesn't come cheap. The NHS is free and it's good. But then that, we're talking about UK here. So <laughs> let's, let's let's come to Gambian Gambian setting, okay. right? Because then we why, need to why give us free when you cannot even that's, give us proper that's health That's the question system. I'm coming to. Uh -huh. Because the health system the, it has always been free somehow. So because it has always been free somehow, we are at the level that we have always been. Holy, you are talking about free. I don't even know where health is, free, is free in Gambia. No, what he's saying is that the price is so ugly. It's so yeah, yeah. It's free. Twenty five dollars is to go to the clinic. You pay ten dollars or twenty five dollars. That is free. <laughs> if compared to you go to a private hospital just to knock on the door, you pay a thousand dollars. For somebody knocking on a door for ten dollars is, is pretty much free. So what I'm saying is, I know health is very key and health is very important, and health is one thing that every Gambian is crying about. So I just want to know, maybe CA, you guys have ideas about how to improve this sector. The reason I brought in free, I'm taking the education as an example. I remember education was not when the IJM came and said free education we've seen how it has gone really down i don't expect it to be very expensive of course but i think there should be a standard where at least people pay even if it's the government that is subsidizing the pay but then there should be an income that is being generated that way would maintain you know good teachers would maintain classroom structures and everything. but is if everything is free even school phone is not being paid by the students we have seen what that has led to health system so i just wanted to know maybe what ideas or you know ca has in terms of addressing these two key important important pillars in now, the there is no evidence to suggest that if it's free it's bad yeah. and the quality is not there i've seen countries where health and education is free and the quality is there we've seen the scandinavian countries let's take Gambia as the example yeah, but what i'm saying <laughs> is that what those countries can achieve we can even achieve better but mm -hmm. we it's have about, to it's accept about and understand we haven't got yeah, to but you have to understand yet. the level of inequality in this country okay. if you want to increase the level in the, in terms of how much people pay some people will be left out yep. of the social of the social safety net there are those who you are saying that they cannot they can afford only one meal a day 
when they are sick and they have to pay, they have to make a choice. Do they pay for the one meal or do they go to hospital? Mm -hmm. But then they see, pay for the one meal. it's good that so you highlighted yeah. that actually. So that is the problem now already. That's what we are seeing. Let's take education for example. If you are not paying a certain amount of school fees, your child is in the bottom, like students are doing well. That's different. So this has got nothing to do with the students. But if you're not paying a certain amount, you see there is a child, I'm that opportunity as somebody who is paying this much. You go to offices, to Nije House School, you can identify most of these students, the schools they went to. They have opportunity to jobs because, of course, ten level of education, which is very visible. That is not like quality. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that is that is what I want to know. What, what we are going how to do you guys will address um, it? Not increasing, but just how it can be addressed. Obviously, when it comes to education, this is ideological on my part. Yeah. I think basic second education should be free. Okay. No child yeah. should pay for basic or second education. University, that's another level. We'll get student support in terms of bursaries and yeah. scholarships for needy students and those who are there good. Go. But for me, basic and secondary should be free. This is, ideolo this is, this, uh, this is my ideological order. This, it has always been like that. Okay. What government needs to do now is to raise the right revenue and invest in education. Okay. It's like you investing in your child's education yeah. because no country can prosper mm -hmm. if education system is lagging behind. Mm -hmm. The problem is not the free. The problem is, in fact, governance, education governance in this country is weak. The curriculum is not fit for purpose. We've not reformed the education sector since colonial period. We're teaching our children to memorize maths, numbers, and geography and physics, not to be creative. So we need to really reform the entire education sector yeah. and invest in the education uh, sector by making sure that we invest in the software of education and the hardware of education. What is the software? The teachers, the trainers. Yeah. Those who teach our children. Yeah. We did not invest in Gambia College. Go to Gambia College, you'll cry. Yeah. And that is why we teach our teachers. So obviously, it's negligence on our part. The hardware, the school, the equipment, not only for children who don't have physical, who are not physical, but even those who are disabled. They can have access to teaching aid. They can have access to ramps. We did not do all those things. So no child should be left behind. So it's about how we save money, or even the money we are going to take loans from, or the grants, whatever, and invest it most into education, increase the budget of education, and reduce budget of most of these ministries that are not bringing in money. And they are not investment ministries in terms of even the office of the president, for example. When it comes to health, obviously, I understand see your point where I come. There should be some form of health insurance scheme where those who really need it, yeah. that they are not working, they are from the lower ranks, uh, ranks of the society, they are given free, but yeah. those who can afford it should pay. Exactly. That is, that is how things should work. But also, the health sector is not only the sector itself. The governance okay. itself needs to yeah. reform the entire ministry. There are overlapping positions that really duplicate each other and they don't know what they are doing. They don't know who to report. We need to reform the entire governance system of, of the health ministry and make sure now we come and invest in primary health care, maternal care, and mental health. Yeah. And also have a scheme where we call health care where you are. I think it's unfair for a woman to be put on top of a saret at yeah. night, 12 kilometers to Queenala to give yeah, birth. Definitely. And then on the way she gives birth in the bush at night, it's raining because the saret is always, the, the road is not smooth. So every person should have health care, or at least primary health care. We have existing structures. We have the Biam Referral Hospital, we have the Farafene, we have Banjo. Let us augment these hospitals, equip them with, with people, skills, with trained nurses to be compassionate, to focus on care and service and delivery, but also put the equipment there uh, that they can work with. But obvious, like I said, even in the NHS, in some parts of the UK, the prescription is not free from the pharmacy. Yeah. In Scotland, perhaps it's free, but still have to pay. Even in Sweden, Scandinavia, mm -hmm. when you go to see there the must GP, be some means you of pay. payment. But we they look at your um, your income, yeah. and then you pay based on your income. Mm -hmm. But across the board, we can't have a sweeping that we have to pay. There are those who really need that support. They're the most vulnerable in society. Those with care needs, the vulnerable, the handicapped, the unemployed, they will be given support. So that is going to be our approach. Okay. So what is, CS, what is going to be CS number one priority um, once in office? Um, I've seen people who say, uh, what is going to be CS number one priority? As a country, what do you think should be our number one priority? Our young people. Because it touches across every sector. Mm. When our young people are not engaged, there's insecurity in this country. And they're a productive force that makes sure that we produce. They're our asset. So it's about how do we invest in young people? How do we provide the right training? And, that, and what jobs do we create for them? Because otherwise, that is, that is the basis of everything. So for us, and also that has to do with a multi, a, 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 that ha, is a, is a kind of a complex approach to how you ensure 
that when we come to power, first is what do we do with young people? Like I said, the median age of this country is 17 years old. It's a very young population. The African average is 18. It means that one of the youngest uh, countries in Africa population-wise, in fact in the world population-wise, 65% are between 25 and 35 years. 41% unemployment. And most of these youths youth, are uh, unemployed, they're feeling deprived, frustrated, and doing nothing. So no matter how many roads you can build, you are going to build. No matter what you are going to do, if the young people are not engaged, in fact, if you even boost the agricultural sector, and young people are not trained to go and work in this sector, or tourism, or agriculture, it's not, it's not going to work. And it has a security implication as well. Having all these young people with so many things happening is also not good for the stability of this country. So our priority is young people. How do we engage young people? How do we provide jobs? How do we build skill centers for them to improve their skills? Because through that, you can attract um, investors to come and invest in this country. But like I said, the Gamba is a situation where it's very difficult for a party politician to say this is my number one priority. Hmm. This happens to countries where already are established. Yeah. Uh, already certain sectors are functioning and running. It's only two key that are, but for us, every sector, every sector is important. No sector is working at this moment. We'll take our first commercial break. When we come back, we'll look at security. And of course, uh, the voter registration, what is CS take on what is happening right now? And do they really have any confidence in the IEC for the December election? When we come back, we look at our love. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms. Or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans. At our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Fay Lempo Warugal Lassi Kepoko Hamne Domi Rio Minga at Mufi Deke. Bufeke Nechi at me, Sakom Kom, Wesuna, Nyar Fuka at Nyenti June Dalasi. Betewer Buneka, Dinga Amlutolo Si Nyari June Dalasi. Lempo, a Silangurgi, the Sukande Kungi Lige Yokute Reum, GRA, Moy Bang Has Bunguri Gambia Sas, Ngir Mufeku Lepolu Lempo, Chibi Reum. Betahna, GRA, the Yegal Fay Kati Lempoine, Warugarla, Purnu Fay, Lunyunan, Withholding Tax on Contra Payment. Man. Nam bepa kontrak buwa johe te si bi reo mila nyuto kon hali si kontrak bingen langoto war nga tiye wanyi ki khayma te mer bu neka fuka bu feke ne kontrak to bi deku ti bi reo mi bu boba di nga waro wanyi te mer bu neka fuka ak jurom li mwoy lempo bu nyunan with holding tax on contract payment li mwoy lempo bi nga khamne yo mi johe kontrak waru galna nga wul bateku dem feyiko ti maka ni GRA tax office bula gena jege bete ti banki GRA jaglel pur fey lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak djurom ganaw bi nga wagne ci xali ci contrat bi amut ben contracto bu ñu teggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk ne nguri gambia ñoko djegale bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense jra di feeku lempo ngir yokute rew mi Dep 
ignore_time_segment_in_scoring Uh, welcome back to part two. Uh, only part one, I'm not sure if you're a new set and first one, what time is it? Dr. Cookie Limbe, you're going to be able to sign all the security. Ah, bangko la situation o. Ah, ni mo mo na sa jambi, akan na conversation o dominate le. Na na ka dominate because mo man sino. Everybody is investing in our security. Ni nte say private security higher no na sugo na only a higher. What about my next door neighbor? Una ya tina. Um, yeah, mi ra bangko la security bite. President Baroko, ako I think o democracy lo mi mekering. Ati wolf. Iti aji mo na tni iti amra mo na. Yeah, long whenever there's a change in social phenomena, yeah. any serious government, you coming along, call you try to answer three basic questions: what is happening, mm -hmm. why is it happening, and how do we intervene to solve it? Yeah. What is happening, along call? Ngaje lo kora se change in social phenomena. There's an increase in crime based on the perception. Yeah. Even though normally the police would have data, it gives us real-time evidence. Go crime rates has gone up by so much percent over the past six months. That can help us. Mm -hmm. But that data doesn't exist. It tells us that crime is only so narrow in Bute role on crime. Well, I have operation zero crime operation. This crime is complex, especially 21st century crime. Crime rates have gone up. Not only gone up, they have also diversified. Yeah. Why? We're not seeing crimes being like broken in jail. So that is established. So crime has gone up. The next question is why? Why? Monatina. Many factors. And before we solve this crime issue, we have to go and look at the root causes of money car cause. One is failed institutions. I'll give you a few. The criminal justice system has failed. The prison is supposed to reform offenders and bring them back into society integ and integrate them. Mm -hmm. But the criminal justice system, they promised uh, prison reforms when the coalition government came. Yeah. They just released prisoners. Um, and also have anti-crime minka youth so arrest them about Kali Bebulu, some mile to six months, eight months, one year. They make criminal networks within the prison. The prison Mundal Alta. No integration or rehabilitation so they can come back into society. We have the mental health uh, care, which has also failed. Tanka Tanka is not a clinic. Yeah. It's not a mental health clinic. If you look at most of the homicide cases, perhaps it has to do with mental health. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, you never know. Yeah. So until and unless we, have, we do those kind of investments. So mental health has, but crucially, the economic aspect, the socio-economic aspect of it. There are many factors we have to understand them. Let's start with rural urban migration. It has increased over the past year. 60% of our population live in urban Gambia. Urban Gambia is not fit to house 60% of the population. It doesn't have enough electricity, enough housing, enough jobs, so it is congested. But international migration, in 2016, we had 16,000 youths that went to Europe, and specifically Germany. Two years later, it was hundreds, 200, 300. So obviously, all these young people, who are supposed to be into some mental offender, but also the our sectors minke absorb the collapse the tourism. Tourism. Thomas Cook went into administration, COVID struck, hotels industry closed. All these young people who are making a living in the hotel industry are in urban Gambia, no jobs, nothing. Inequality. You see, as a young man frustrated, feeling deprived, 
you see, you see top civil servant driving an expensive car. Yeah, long that money should be invested in you to make a better life. You will be every day. People like us, we cannot secure ourselves because we are poor. Yeah. But you see, your neighbor, I feel so sorry for Santo. I see the TV, I buy a bag while I So obviously, all these young people, they have to, but also drugs in this, cheap synthetic drugs. Alcohol, easy access to alcohol. Cost of living has skyrocketed, there's so much inflation. And the dependency syndrome man change at all. Uh, so all these things are a failure, but also operational. Security sector reform field. You see, yep. whenever there is a shift from autocracy to democracy, mm -hmm. security is the most critical component it can in check. Well, when I said to borough government that economic cannot end so long term stability in this country, arrest. I know what I was talking about. Yeah. I wasn't talking about the military intervening. You no. said that long time. Exactly. The first, yeah. first because, few months of the government. Them, yeah. Uh, this it's like an earthquake. Yeah. When an earthquake happens, that's what they call the aftershock. So when a transition happens from autocracy, where state institutions operate in a very different way, to a democracy where they operate in a very different way, there are aftershocks, and those one is one of them is security. Therefore, security sector reform will always come in transitional periods. You have to do a proper security sector reform. So the police know that they are operating within a, uh, uh, a context, it's a, demo, it's a democratic context. But we fail in the security sector reform. Police has not been equipped, both software and hard. No training in terms of dealing with new crimes to prevent and to solve crimes, but also no equipment. 21st century Gambia. It is a police jamal 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 proper communications gadget. Even the most poorest countries, the police they can communicate, mm -hmm. they have a gadget. They don't have proper uniforms, they don't have vehicles, there's no database that can give us real time. Which areas have we seen increase in crime? So we know where to put the resources. Which areas, let's say for example, there's a database. It tells us that two year crime rates has gone up in the past six months. But in Fony, it has gone down. We have to know we have to increase policing in Tujere. We have to increase police citizenship, uh, police civilian ratio in Tujere. We have to build more police stations around Tujere. Perhaps CCTV, it depends on also what type of crime. Because crime is mm -hmm. It could be street crime, it could be domestic violence, it could be gender based violence, it could be pedophilia, all this is crime. It could be cyber crime. It's Seattle. So, how to deal with this thing? It's a problem. But police cannot even do proper forensic no. job. Being a more fast work, no? before even the police are their citizens will go there and tamper with yeah. evidence and start sharing pictures online. Evidence is gone. Well, and they cannot even solve crime. So, to solve, to deal with the problem, we have to do three approaches. Force operations, equip the police, both training and digital infrastructure, forensic infrastructure, but also equipment, mobile uh, vehicles, um, 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 get communications, get it and so on and so forth. Mm. When it comes to the socioeconomic aspect, engage mm. young people. A country with this young population and 41% unemployment among young people is scary. Engage young people. At least, we're not saying provide job for every young person. Government can do that but create avenues where they can go and build their talent and their skills. Either they go for skills training, or they go develop their talents in youth spaces. Today, there is no place in Gambia where youth spaces where they go and improve their talents in basketball, in football, in swimming. All they are building is petrol stations, stores, petrol mm -hmm. stations. Even Bola Kampela, Strasa, Peka, Busi, Bola, So where will they go to? Youth, they, they see, they have, that's the way you deal with young people. There's a whole lot of sociology in how to deal with young people so that they don't engage in delinquencies. We just leave them to their devices. So engage in young people, engage them positively so that they, at least they are doing something useful. But also crucially, institutional reforms. The prison system needs to be reformed so that whenever we have offenders there and they come out, there's a system that can integrate them back into society. Inside prison, teach them skills there. There are many services that Gambia needs today. If we're able to produce the goods and services we need in this country for ourselves, we don't need foreign aid, we don't need grants, because the economy will grow. But today, unfortunately, most of the goods that we need come from outside. Mm -hmm. We provide a lot of employment, we provide millions of employment around the globe every year. How? Because most of the goods we, end, we, we, we consume here are produced outside by people who are employed in those sectors. It means control kasulamina, modula kadidan to instead of kadidan fire. If you want to build a house in Gambia, an average house, 95% of the input you need comes from outside. Peru, Gorgeto, Basal, Penturo, Tile, Cemento, Abekabana Bantel. Imagine if we are making those things in our country. It means that Monestesia, young people have jobs. Almost 80% of our food, Mamanke Manosit, Amanke Ketchup, Amanke Tuluti, the whole thing, we provide jobs for young Senegalese. We provide jobs for young 
Chinese. Mm -hmm. We're not providing just for our own people because what the things we need, we can produce and abandon it. So to deal with the security situation, like I said, the priority is young people because they are the ones who feel deprived. They want who see themselves in an unequal society where wealth is not equally distributed and they feel left out and marginalized. And the sectors that absorb them are closer. Jama used to do one thing. He used to absorb them into the security, security services. Sense, yeah. Well, now we have almost half of Gambia's um, employed to be able to security service. Yeah. Police, immigration, fire service, prison, army, drug squad. Yeah. Because I'm a life idol. Yeah. One day security sector reform that's a moratorium. Yeah. So they're not being employed there. They want to have a outside. They're the not going to the tourism those, sector. Yeah. Agriculture is dead because of poor rains and also no inputs. What do you want them to do? They've been in the streets, but they have to make a living. Because they have to pay rent. Yeah. They have to eat. They have to wear nice shoes. They have to live the consumer life. What do they do? Well, if I do the referring thing, iPhone full of Babalu, killing his iPhone uh, Pro Max 12, we can find you there. Killing his iPhone 12, driving a nice car, and easy like I can get at a continual drone drone is costing $20,000. What do you expect in that kind of society? Yeah. Crime. Then yeah. you have drugs everywhere. You have alcohol everywhere. Then that's it. That's it. Actually, Lim Fiwa here, definitely my, is the reality. My, my reality. And I think you've made a very important point talking about skills. I think um, not everybody more wanted them to office. Not everybody should be suited and booted. So I think their skills is one thing. Law Hamne Tam should be created skill centers. Law Hamne youth see talk mm -hmm. the idol around because man, I remember my grandfather used to say something. Mune sudenga amdo te fecha la buga, tachu tachu la buga. Support ko mune ka the best tachu kat. So they fecha kat la buga neka support ko muda ha nyep fecha. So wow. So these are things you hamne government mune ko look into individuals ni hamne amne opportunity. For example, time is about time individuals in your mom send ala. Definitely your ham fi buga invest into like their money. But I think time it warne your tolu for hamne time social economy binga wahni warne your amne ko ay individuals your hamne they are supporting. But I think lo lo time it warna gina mune inke wa skills base. Is very very key. That is the most and important. Important. Yeah. Well, see, a plumber in, in the UK yeah. will come and just do 50 minutes work. You pay him 200 pounds. Yep. Handy money, you know, overhaul is so they make today. Handy money, let me know. You overhaul it. Window cleaner, see. And yeah. there's a lot of services in this country. Yeah. yeah. Um, from pedicure to money. Yeah. Just that, but the issue is that people want good things. Yeah. When the service is professional and well trained, people demand for that service. But the thing is, um, it, it all, co all comes down to inequality. I was talking to a young man, one of Ben Aplomba, Madon Wahalfa, Deba Kidemba. Munge Wahalimbuga def Mumani Nako Bole, somebody put my bole ko koku, put the Fabuga register business. This is a guy ko ham. I know how hard working this young mm -hmm. man is. And he all he wanted was support. Koko support, mu mu register business and be mu am little income poor support because stay. So, if you 10,000, you malo get malo lot of money, you can get a lot of money, you can Business boom is hand to mouth. Yeah. Business is going to grow. You cannot invest back. You can invest back into that business. Mm -hmm. Why do you need that little boost? And in this society, you can get a lot of money. You can get a lot of money. You can get a lot in your collateral. Yeah, the one you demand. Yeah. Ban yeah. Hale, 90 percent of population will not provide collateral. Banks are not giving you collateral. Government need to create um, a startup a, scheme. A startup scheme for young people. Yeah. That is not there. So kuma wo amde kuma wo amunda. Board dem e fe na. Bude esa mam ne kud minister. Bude esa boke ne kud minister. Yodo am. These are things that we do. You don't know what I've seen. This is what we want to do. We want to do this. We want to create a startup scheme. Yeah. When we are going to create youth investment, I'm not. I don't want to call it banks, but financial service. But it has also be tied to training. Training. Let's say, for example, only them not GTI, they've not plumbing training for three years. Not only to how to do plumbing. Yeah. We have to also embed entrepreneurial training into that. That. I don't want you to only be a plumber. Yeah. I want to have a businessman to grow your plumbing business. Yeah. I don't want to teach you only to build a house, mm -hmm. to be a mason. I want to teach you how to also be a, business, a good businessman as a mason, mason, as you can grow your business. So once you are done with that training, you have a good project for us that well, look, I'm done with my training. I'm a registered, qualified cap uh, carpenter, a certified one. Government will have a database of all certified, qualified government carpenters, plumbers, electricians. All government services has to go to them because it's a database. And these are Gambians. Mm -hmm. um, so obvious one. Two. You need support. What do you need? I need to open a business. Yeah. I need start. I need a startup capital to start with equipment. We can give you give you five years tax break, and then we give you two years 
uh, uh, probation, you don't have to pay the loan after you have to pay into that fund, so it rotates. That is what is needed, and the, the money is there, because this is one of the monies you can use to fight irregular migration, yeah. and the European Union and the Germans are ready to put that money for young people to be engaged. But that is the only way. But if, like you said, I already went to GTG uh, three years, I'm done. Yeah. I cannot have a shop to rent. I cannot buy the materials to start. Obviously, I'll be, and also I don't have the, let me tell you something. The carpenters in Dubai and China are yeah. no better than our carpenters. Mm -hmm. If we train our carpenters and give the right tools, they'll make the same chair that is made in Dubai and China and the same bed. Yeah. Today, if Ole wants to buy a bed and a chair, where does he go? He goes to Karabakh Avenue okay. to get it Dubai. Uh -huh. But we can make it here. Yeah. If government is just making sure yeah. that we train our carpenters and all our furniture in offices, in schools, in hospitals are bought from Gambian carpenters who are well trained and their finishing is good, their product is super class. You provide employment here. But today, if government wants to buy furniture, they go to Caraba Avenue. Mm -hmm. If they want to buy beds, they go to the second-hand shop. So obviously, you need to really protect, train our skilled manpower, and you protect them by making sure that you do bring policies whereby they are number one in terms of procu uh, uh, buying service, procuring services from them. When government wants to make their vehicles, Gambian fitas, Mialongo, Erara GTT, Alia, Karanefu, Gita, they are certified. So government has a database of fitas, 10 Gambians, they are certified. Mm. These are the ones who are going to make our vehicles. Carpenters, these are the uh, carpenters are certified Gambia, so that you provide employment for them. The problem with that is nepotism. That is another big problem that Gambia has. Because the Nagis Natoxi Plus, Mulela ne Oli qualified. <laughs> but Oli, how about also Oli there? You would just relate even with her name only, sir. This is far to me. So, Gambia, yeah. I think we have a big problem. We do. Human capital, human resource, I think that's the starting point. Once you understand the dynamics, now look, there are certain things, party affiliation should be put on the side, nepotism should be put on the side, and that's the only way we can actually yeah, go I forward. I agree. Wow, but I then agree. that is a block for mm Hamne -hmm. to move that block. I think we need leadership we can. We do, we I believe I mean, so. I think because I obviously, believe so you know why yeah. that is happening is that yeah. there is no performance evaluation in this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no output yeah. in terms of our As result. long as you are not going to be able to do it, you will not be able to do it. So, we have a problem. So we, I mean, yeah. the it's, work we have to lot. transform this it's country it's and build the modern Gambia is no child's it's no, it's no it's no play. Yes. And to be honest, it's going to be a huge task for any government that they'll elect. Yeah. Otherwise, then government for five years, I don't complete. Don't go complete. But I know people's expectation two, three, and you give no, I promise you, move the no. But the task is it's huge. huge. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you that. Okay. And doctor, I still want to be on security um, because obviously, um, the economic. You know, I've said this few months into the government. Um, I think you're because of some of the things you said. At that point, even me, I mean, at that time, no baby, um, this is this was our government. No baby feel like oh, nyante support lale. But you started raising the alarm at that point. Um, you talked about how you think this government, you know, you said that openly, mm -hmm. and you also talked about the security issues and. Um, you know, it led to you being arrested. But um be more jama have come to the realization that yemin for nunkunung ah doctor mean for yamara many and a kill I'm a for a killer to nyad. Because being a manager, Hani say economic began. For almost five years into this government, economic began. In fact right now I'm coming for all for economic and police uh yeah. you need not gun be a junk. How do you think Ami be found Jalanyad? How can we entrust our entire security to foreign security services for this long? Is it rational? Is it something that is right? Gambia is a sovereign state. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge mistake. Yalong, um, yeah, come up with How would I feel about it? The question yeah. should be how. How is the army feeling about it? How are they feeling? About it? they are feeling about it. Yeah, because yeah. they. Um, uh, there's this content. Yeah. In the sense, go. You know, when you are here, you want to play a role. You are not given the chance to play that role. Yeah. Ekomi was supposed to be a short-term transitional outfit. Yeah. They are not going to and mix over the times and happens, and then train, have joint ventures with our army, train them, and la la la, post dictatorship uh, defense, and so on. They leave, but obviously, we've seen that their mandate has been extended and extended and extended, mm. uh, and that is not good. We've seen all the countries it happened. It not it did not end well, and we have to learn our lessons as well. Previously. So I think the government now should have a, an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have 
foreign forces in your country for five years. You don't wake up one morning and tell them to leave, yeah. except if there's a major disruption. Like we saw in 1994 when the Nigerian forces were here. Mm -hmm. They left because there was a major disruption, there was a coup, and they had to be withdrawn after the coup. But once it's a normal process of withdrawal, there should be an exit strategy, which mm -hmm. can take up to one year. Because they have to hand over and have a transition, and then our army, our, the role they are playing, our outfit can start to play that role. That's it. But now what government should be thinking is an exit strategy and not transforming the economic into a police unit. That will be uh, a big mistake uh, that the government will do. And I hope they change their mind on that because that is not what Gambia needs. Gambia has post-transition. It's not that we are coming from war or genocide. Uh, we are coming from a dictatorship, uh, I mean, a quasi-democracy. There were elections, institutions were working. There are rights violations, obviously. The state institutions were used to uh, inflict terror against Gambians, some Gambians. This is what this was our situation. The transition was there was an impasse, there was a stalemate. We did mm -hmm. that, but it's not like we are a post-war country uh, whereby this kind of policing is needed. So I don't know whoever advised them to really think about that, but it's a grave, it's a very bad advice, and I would urge the government to think about it and start focusing and paying attention with our security officers, giving the right training, giving the right tools to do their work, and they deliver better than these foreign um, forces. Uh, and I think. Um Training is what needs to be done first, because we understand there's a security sector mom. Um, we had qualified people, but then it was a place where youths were just anybody pretty much was being kind of employed. So we had that. We had where you just Nangaje Health School, dojo exams. Everybody was kind of dumped into the security service. So again, training is very very key mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm before even that transition mm -hmm. it should have been done anyway it's five years now we're talking about anyways but before that transition that handing over is done yes we do have very qualified um, security personnel but we have a chunk that were just there because it was the place where people were just recruited man i i know people i've mm -hmm. seen people who mm -hmm. some stopped at ESX, and i've seen them in those days yeah. full uniform with guns yeah. mm -hmm. and everything and those people don't know a from b mm -hmm. or anything mm -hmm. so i i definitely do agree when people say at some point like by now even a comic should go yeah yes that i i would agree to mm -hmm. but then again before economic leaves as well training has to be done in our service because we had a lot of people that were just dumped there for employment that was supposed to be the security <laughs> sector so yes yeah, so because that was then. supposed so to you know, it has failed, so we need to start looking at now. You think of your security and imagine what kind of security is needed in Gambia. Gambia. Then you plan your security based on that. What are our threats? Yeah. Today, if you ask the government, what do you think is the most important threat security facing the Gambia? Most gov the government will not even know. Yeah. Is this Senegal? Is it, uh, is, is, is the threat geopolitical? For is, it yeah. is it cyber? Is it cyber? Yeah. Is it, is it, is it, are we forcing a rebellion from within? Yeah. So what is it environmental? Yeah. Because there are scholars who think that future yeah. wars will be environmental, mm -hmm. uh, climate change, in, in migration, and so on and so yeah. forth. So what is the most sec pressing security issue for the Gambia? Not only for today. What will be the most pressing security issue in 15 in years? 15. So you build the security infrastructure to deal with these pressing issues and also the future pressing. But today we don't even know what our main security threat is. We just think that having a life standing army will solve the problem. Maybe perhaps not. Perhaps we need to rethink the Gambian military defense and try to see what we can do. Do we have to focus and invest in peace, peacekeeping missions which can even bring money? Uh, what do we do? Do we, do we need to, to diversify the army in terms of profession so they can get into agriculture, into engineering? Uh, what can we, that means you have to really tailor their training. So when they go to the military academy, you can be a military officer but as, as well as a lawyer, you yeah. can be a military officer and a building engineer. You can be a military officer yeah. so that you are still trained professional to fight war when it is necessary. But you also have a life where you can serve society yeah. as an imam, as a priest, or whatever service that is needed from yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. So, yeah. so now, um, we, December is election, and we are doing voter registration. Um, first, what's your observation as to uh, registry or registry, ongoing registrations? Well, I think that it's not going as desired. Uh, the planning has been poor, obviously, for an exercise of this magnitude. This is the first post dictatorship election for the camp with high stakes, many political parties, and the stakes are very high. Yeah. Within a context which is very fragile, 
there is so much polarization in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the divide, the lines have been drawn, yeah. and the fault lines are very, very dangerous fault yeah. lines. They uh, they take ethnic, region, uh, regional, and religious lines, yeah. and and for us that is that is very important. Therefore, we should have really taken our time to ensure that the system is not made such that it can be it, its integrity can be questioned. See, election is a process. It starts from making of the laws to registration, to election day counting, and la 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 la. And this is an integral part, part of it. So if the integrity is undermined, it can have implications for the results uh, in, in December. And we've seen that attestation. I had a press conference two months ago, and I raised the issue of attestation. That is a loophole yeah. that we need to think of. I said this, that I don't have the solution because it's a bit messy. Yeah. The law is saying that the Alcalos and the Chiefs, I said, but it can cause us problems. Yeah. I think it is time for us to think together how do we really deal with it. But I don't think people pay, pay attention to that. And we are seeing what it is doing. Yeah. And because of that, it can cause problems. Yeah. Because people are saying that people are registering that are not 18 years old. Yeah. People are claiming that people are registering who are not Gambian. People are saying that Rohi Malik Lo of Mayor of Banjo doesn't have the standing, the legal standing to issue attestation. Decision. And all these things can be issues that the court will have to decide. And it can cause really problems for us. Yeah. My thing is, um, this is the law. This is the law. Did we fail as a nation? I mean, I mean, I said this to every member of the coalition partners. They failed us. The agenda was to reform, yeah. to, 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 to change our, our, our laws, to, to restructure the institutions, and nothing has happened. That's why I've said this to all of them. Why should we trust you? Because the reason why um, solo standing went out it was electoral, electoral reforms. reforms. Yeah. If the government did not bring it to the assembly, they should sponsor private member bills because this was their fight. For 22 years, they were fighting with Jami. They said they wanted electoral reforms. They wanted to change the laws. But this is our laws. Yeah. These alcalos <laughs> are appointed by the government. Yeah. The Minister of Local Government appoints these alcalos. The, the Minister of Local Government is a member of a political party, an executive member. So... These alcalos are going to attest people. So tell me, how do you avert corruption or registering people who are not over age or under age? But if the alcalo attests, who, who dares to... But you cannot. The, the whole entire enterprise has been exposed to manipulation and abuse from on the onset. That is why I raise the alarm. Because yeah. you have to understand that during the oras period, this attestation was happening. Yeah. But at that time, the thinking was that alcalo is an institution that is respected yeah. that has ethical morals and, and, has and, and the chiefs yeah. and that they'll do their jobs to the best of their ability. Where but things have changed. The stakes have gotten higher, higher yeah. now. So we should have really talked, like you said, the coalition has failed us. Yes. There is no single reform. They, in their MOU, they promised that within three months they'll remove the Public Order Act. Public yeah. Order Act is still, still there. there. We'll have a new constitution, no new constitution. Yeah. Not even a new electoral law. Yeah. No, tier, no, no general commission is not implemented. Nothing like zero. Zero. Zero, nothing. Yep. So obviously, um, that failure has happened, and we are going to pay a heavy price for that. Now, the whole entire process is marred with malpractices, mm -hmm. especially from what we are receiving. CA has uh, volunteers across the country, 113, from a pool of volunteers who are recording, taking evidence. What are the feedbacks that you're getting from your team? Uh, so far, it's slow. Machines stop working yeah. Yeah. because of the heat pops. Um, uh, political party agents are there and they are making noise. Mm -hmm. They are saying, you are not Gambian, you are Gambian. Who is Gambian? We don't know. Yeah. Um, taking people's voters cards and taking notes. Recording. Recording. Yeah. And I think that is, that is wrong. That is why I agree with the CSO coalition when they came up with the preliminary report. That political party agents are not well trained before they are deployed. So they know exactly what their role is and what exactly. they have to look at. And I yeah. think we as a party accept that feedback and I think we'll have to improve on that. And, and just to add on to that, um, and we've seen political parties trying to even intimidate um, alcalos as well. Yes, alcalos are appointed by um, the Minister of Local Government, but at least alcalos are it's something that they inherit. That is what we know. Mm -hmm. It's not like they they picked and said, you are the alcalo of this region. Um, all alcalos, apart from when it was Jame time, Jame definitely would come and say, okay, it's Fatu's family who's supposed to be alcalos, but I'm going to choose doctors. So yes, they were appointed. But now, Alcalos, it's a family inheritance. But only there's no difference between Jami no, time no, no. and now when it comes it to Alcalos. It's very different. No. Because Jami's time, Jami would, would select, Jami would go to families, 
Jamie would go to families that are supposed to be alcalos from that area not, not and say, mm. not all. He can not change always. sometimes. Exactly, yeah. and change it. Yeah. And say, no, you know what? I don't want the Ture family anymore. I'm going to take the Sise family. When that area, let's say Lamin, has always been the Ture family where they were. Like, my father is an alcalo, and I know the alcalo of La Tecunda is always from Fallen. So they have never really been appointed. Mm -hmm. They go through the whole process of alcaloship yes, yeah. before it gets to the minister to say, oh, okay, this is the person that the area have selected, I would endorse. So that's how, how, how alcaloship should work. Mm -hmm. is, is it working but that way? No. That's different. But, but that's it's how it should that work. Way, right? Right? On the so normal it, circumstances, on the, normal the circumstances. alcalo should not give attestation. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't, you know what's funny? Yeah. And I said it here, I don't, even I don't even agree to alcalos giving out attestations. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree to that, to be honest. But then let's look at the case of Rohi Malik Law, for example. That is, alcalos, at least the law has allowed them. So with her situation, I think IEC chose the goodwill they said. But then this is somebody who is elected, who has a high stake in elections in Banjo. Mm -hmm. Compared to the Alcalo, the Alcalo of La Secunda, for example, does not have a high stake of elections in Seracunda West. Because the Alcalo is not elected to run. Mm -hmm. But Rohi Maliklo has a very high stake mm -hmm. in elections in Banjo. Because mm -hmm. she is the mayor. But we have seen Alcalos who are official members we of political that. parties. And they are giving attestation. And they are and giving we we that. So this is about moral judgment. Right? That is what I'm saying. That is what I'm Moral judgment yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. We have seen our Carlos, right? But we need to go by the law as well. I'm not disputing that. That yeah, is then, happening. The, 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 the minister of even local government, that's my husband, he's going to kill me though. But no, let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. There's some, even IEC people, that people have claimed. There's a lot of claims. There's a lot of stories. There's a lot of things that are being said. Some are true, some are not true. So I wouldn't sit here to take brief for anybody, mm. right? Mm. But what I'm saying is, in general, right, alcoholship, um, is it right for them to give attestations? I don't think they should, to be honest. I think every Gambian at some point now in 2021 should be able to go and get a birth certificate or at, at least have an ID card. I think we should do away from Alcalos Can definitely we do giving, with the, the, giving the, the, the local government minister <laughs> being political. I think that's where it should start. Because if the local government minister who appoints these Alcalos, mm -hmm. he, they're under him. Because we have seen in areas where when there's dispute in an area and they, 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 they cannot choose, it ends up at the, minister, the minister's yeah. desk. And the minister makes the final yeah, judgment. Yeah. Because he has that power. Mm -hmm. The law gives him that power. Mm -hmm. So that minister is the boss of all of these alcalos. Yes, and we have seen a political rally when the president said, you know, the alcalos, I don't know, he was I'm not about the president who claimed that alcalos didn't go because he politics didn't go and they should not. Yeah, the president yeah. They yeah. should not. So, what, are you telling me this? Alcalos want to risk their job no. by not attesting the people that the president is bringing. No, so I think, I think that's, a, it's, that's, it's a a fundamental, that's a fundamental flaw with yeah, the Yeah, that is. Yeah. And that is why Which we are I calling agree. for electoral reforms. And I don't blame, to deal with those I agree. And I don't blame the Alcalos or the government. No, 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 government. You know who I blame? No, but if the Alcalos should not. Government. No, but Alcalos the, should not. The, if you are an Alcalo and you're supposed to give attestation, do the right thing. And even this way, Alcalos are not supposed to. The Malik law system. The Rohi Malik law system. But you don't have Alcalo. Yeah. Okay, there are people who are in Banjul who don't have attestation, mm -hmm. who don't have birth certificate or something. Mm -hmm. who, attest who, who gives them attestation to go um, elect? For the past 22 years, the mayor of Banjul have been doing it. Was it right? It was not right. Exactly. It was not right. But the mayor have been doing it. And now IEC, the electoral body, they have not been, they've been doing so many messed up things. <laughs> and they did this thing again. And they said, um, yeah, the mayor, we give it to the mayor. My thing with the whole thing is the system. Because the laws, proper laws, are not in place. If we had reformed our laws, if we had changed all of these in our books, you think this would have happened? No. no. This would not have happened. But I tell you so one it thing. comes to uh, one thing. If, if uh, people challenge the Rohi Malik law issue in the courts, yeah. and the Supreme Court decides that she had no legal standing to issue it, what the entire process is going it's to exactly. drain. It yeah. means that every attestation she issued will be null and void. Yeah. And that can affect the elect. That is why I said we are in, we are in really... 
when it when, it's a very tricky situation mm -hmm. and then when that's the difference mm -hmm. with the alcalos even because the alcalos they've been given the legal mandate to attest yeah. so alcalos when they are challenged they'll be challenged on attesting somebody who's 15 yeah. who's 14 yeah. and then that person becomes who's not and who's right? not and who's exactly yeah. but with Rohi Malik difficult to ascertain and exactly difficult but with Rohi Malik law yeah. her situation for me it's not like I'm as I said I'm taking brief for any alcalo or not but then Alcalos, as it, they should not be yeah. attesting any under 15s and everything. And these things would be challenged yeah. because we have these agents who, and then IEC have said we have a court where after all of this people can go and challenge. And this yeah. has been going on for the yeah. for the longest time. Yeah. So Alcalos attestations have been going on for a longest time, and they've been challenged at some point. Mm. You even have Alcalos, somebody would come in, and the Alcalo himself would say, no. Even like I'm an Alcalo, I'm a daughter of an Alcalo, and somebody would come in and say, Ki, I'm 14 years. Because I know that person. Yeah. And Alcala would not assess, attest to that person. Yeah. But with the Rohi Malik law issue, we're looking, we Alcalo should not be compare. Who is 16 years exactly. old? Exactly. Just by looking at people. Yeah, but when sometimes. People at me, think I'm, yeah, let me tell I'm, you. I'm younger than my age. Yeah. I know, so. I know at least the process a little bit. I know one thing. If somebody comes for an attestation to Adan Alcala's residence, you, because the attestation doesn't talk about residence, it talks about citizenship. So if the person brings an expired Gambian ID, for example, mm. and says, I now live in La Tecunda, for example, you attest that person because they have presented a Gambian document. It's expired, yes, but it's a Gambian document, right? What if you don't bring a document? If you don't bring a document, you get people who come in mm. and say, I can attest that <laughs> Dr. Sise was born. And then you <laughs> submit. I know, there's a flaw. The entire system is flawed. And then you <laughs> say, Dr. Sise, this is my ID. Uh, but then I would bring my ID to attest that Dr. Sise is Gambian and was born here. So now, if Fatu challenges that, we get to the courts. I am the one, the Alcalo at that point goes by what was presented to him, which okay, was let me, me ask, coming let me ask in. You a question. You see, the system is it's just. Flawed. The whole you, system you know is not right. You know why it is messed up? I agree. Let's, right. say we have, let's say we have. 500 cases of such. Yeah. It's going to overwhelm the courts. Yeah. Yes. And so it's yeah, but chances but of getting how many you Gambians? Know? How many people have Gambian ID cards who are not Gambian? Yeah. And this is the reason why people used to say, oh, Jame, you know, remember yeah, the 300,000 yeah. yeah. voter, voter cards? How many of those people, they have Gambian ID cards? Yeah. They have Gambian, people have, Gambian passport was the easiest to apply. And how can you to prove that these people are not Gambian? Gambian That's another Gambian problem that we're doing. We need a population register. Yeah. Yes. Um, I cannot imagine that in this day and age, we don't have population register. Exactly. Where every Gambian is, is in that data, is in that system. Yeah. Your name, your surname, Thank your you. biometrics, your date of birth, your hospital you go to, the sicknesses you have, uh, whether yeah. you are married or not, your income. Everything should be there, yeah. and also make sure that every child, everybody who's 18, after eight, once you are 18, you cannot access services if you don't have a, exactly. a an, an ID card. But, but these are the things that we should have done. Yeah. But again, we are in a situation whereby also, mm -hmm. if you remove the attestation totally, because these enfranchised people, exactly. Yeah. Passport, so that's why I said the attestation so one. So it's a, it's the law has given them. But the Banjul case, I think we have to turn very carefully and stop comparing the Banjul case with the Alcalos. No, I mean, no, I don't think no, no, not us, not us. I think I've seen more people off, yeah. comparing, saying no, they've been doing this. We need things have changed now. They have been doesn't exist. No, it can't. It's in the constitution. Yeah. Exactly. But with it's the mayor of Banjul, yeah. it could be challenged in a court, court of law. And, and, it can and the Supreme Court makes a ruling that she has no legal standing to do it. No it means that null and void all voters' cards that were that's received received with her attestation is null and void. And then that's yeah. a big problem. Yeah. That so, a so problem. And then as you said, yeah. it being wrong before or it's being done before doesn't make it right. Yeah. Does yeah. it make yeah. it right? Yeah. So I think um, not us here, but then even the general people should understand. Because I've seen people compare. No, al kala Yanyajah attestation. Rahimunna Jah attestation. It's different. I don't know. I mean, Alcalos, you don't enjoy the legal mandate yeah. to give attestations. And Alcalos, you enjoy attestation is the same process of simple parade. They them challenge, not even the Alcalos, but man mari wane, fatu prostu mane gambian la. And then we need to be very careful. We have seen party agents, we have seen individuals, they stop niti, are you gambian? <laughs> and I can tell you, <laughs> and the old incident of my own auntie who went to Paris when she, in 1985, when she was like 16, 17, She's, she speaks French and sounds Senegalese. And somebody challenged her and said, she's Senegalese. So they ask you, are you Gambian? And she has the yeah. same mom and dad no, with that, that, my that own is, that dad. Is, that is not right. Just because she sounds Senegalese. So we have to tread very yeah, careful. Yeah. It's a very sensitive issue. Yeah. Of course, I'm not um, saying nobody should challenge anybody who's been giving an attestation if you're sure of that person being non Gambian, because non Gambian should not vote. You but might be not be be not vote. Be careful we there have also. To be, careful. No, be careful there also. You can be a non Gambian but have a residency. Exactly. Yes, yes, no. So yeah. and yeah. when I mean so non Gambian, somebody who doesn't have a legal status. Yeah, in so the that country. is why it's very, that is why people don't 
have to be careful. We have to be very careful because it's you can be annoyed because I, I mean, you lived in Europe yeah. before. Yeah. We vote. Yeah, exactly. We are not twabs. No. Yeah. <laughs> but we sometimes when, when we have the right... If you have the legal yeah. illness, yeah. 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 we look at our own kids. Like, they were not born here. Yeah. They, but yeah. then their birth certificates even didn't say they were born here. But because it, my, I am Gambian, so automatically they Gambian. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen somebody, I've seen somebody being attested who was born in Togo. You know, and then it was challenged. But then both parents are Gambians. The person happened to be born in Togo. Yeah. So for me, I'm not saying this because these are things I heard. These are things that I've witnessed because I am from, from my grandfather has been in Akalo for 24 years. And so I live there. So I know these things. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the sensitivity of these things. And I've seen people challenging. And this Senegalese issue, I'm telling you, my own aunt happened not even more than a month ago. So that's why I so think we have the to be bottom careful. line is we need to reform. That yes, is the it brings thing. us to. Um, it brings and that us is to that is the missed opportunity by the coalition. By yeah. the coalition, the coalition uh, really, when they took over, yeah, the first thing they don't know their priorities. Yeah, they really aborted the agenda mm -hmm. of, of the, the reform agenda. Yeah, and they had other priorities, and that is the price we are paying today, and that might be the price we are going to pay Before in the next long elections. Time. Yeah. because because um, any change without a meaningful reform, yeah, that change is bound to fail yeah. and is bound to not to succeed. And that is what is happening. The midwife a, a, a change, mm -hmm. which was which was midwife under very difficult circumstances, which was the impasse. Now the reform was supposed to make that child strong and healthy because it came a bit sick, yeah. but the reforms failed. Yeah. So now it it's still that is why it is fragile. That is why we are seeing all these fissures happening, um, all these convulsions happening about what's happening with the alcalo data station. Wait until elections. <laughs> you will see more more. More, 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 yeah. more, more issues. Yeah. I on, think on people have to day. definitely trend very carefully about challenging people. Being IEC have made it very clear. Go to the courts. So people should stop stopping people and saying, "Are you gambling?" Who you cannot look at somebody and say they no, profile. I think we should, everybody should condemn that. Yes, uh, we can't profile condemn. people no. by looking no, at no, them no, no. or by their last names or the way they sound. No, that's profiling. That that's we cannot accept. So we, we should, have to we be careful. Um, for CA, what we are doing is that we've given our our guys logbooks to collect exactly. evidence. When they arrive, the time they arrive, the time they left, what they saw, write evidence, photo evidence, whatever evidence, we are compiling. Yes. When the exercise is over, we don't want to undermine the exercise. When yes. it's over, exactly. yeah. we'll look at all the evidence. Do we need to go to court? Do we have enough evidence to go to court? Do you anything? We'll do it. If not, we'll just... But, I mean, going around stopping, are you Gambian or Gambian? No, that is wrong. That can really uh, cause really big, yeah. big trouble in this yeah. country. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let them be very strong. Yeah. Let them be courageous. Because this election, a lot is at stake. Yeah. Election labo hamne nisi tek baken den bari. Election labo hamne is a do or die for pretty much everybody. Yeah. So I E C wow. So I E C being the referee. Sun good I good the farm yo hamne am goodwill. It's either black or white. As it doesn't matter how many times it's been done. Things have changed now. People are more aware. People are more educated. People are more ready. And we don't have dictatorship anymore. Mm -hmm. So people are ready to challenge things. So they have to be strong. Because So man, lima IEC, let them continue doing the right thing. When you say it can. Because if not, what is at stake? At the end of the day, we are all Gambians. Noon lavonyo affect. It trickles down of back course, to the citizens. Course, course. It doesn't stay up there or it doesn't stay in one corner. It comes back to all of us. So they have to be careful. Nini tamit, nini nyugena, nyu register, candidate si bari nini. Nga said kula doi. Nga said kula mandate am doi. Nga said yo ko olu. Nga saan kosa karta sinjeka at taranga agiar. Doctor, I'm going to tell you, Doctor, I'm going to go overseas. I'm going to meet the Gambian Sibari. Just briefly, the Gianni Catayla or Tripo, Munea Sababu, and in Cabrita, and in Gambian Olimin Cachafan, I think I could matter back. There's this association called Gambian Refugee Association. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, what they do is they fight for the welfare of Gambian refugees in Malta, Italy, Germany, and, and, and Switzerland. I've been in touch with them since 2018. I've been advised there. Okay. So recently, young call Eko they applied for a permit to demonstrate because they were deportation on the start. Yeah. And the permit was rejected. So what should I advise them? Ngo ko ninta long all demonstration obola follow. Yeah. It doesn't solve all problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes engagement and dialogue you achieve more than you demonstrate. Ni permit delay demonstrate four five hours silokang. 
you say, is your problem solved? No. no. Okay, but also, if I'll be in Europe around very soon, I would like to come at my own cost to Germany. Let me see the conditions the boys are living, Nisi mm -hmm. advice. So, so that if I'm here fighting your cause, I know what to say, to say authoritatively. It. Yeah. So, when I was Germany, I went home to home, ni Kachata, to know their situation, whether their rights are being respected, whether their living conditions are good, and what they are doing. Also, remind them of their responsibilities called the ambassadors of Gambia. Even though um, until what we can do is to promote mm -hmm. their agenda and also their cause, but also to make our work easy, they have to follow the law in Germany mm -hmm. and not engage in things. Yeah. So, looking at the whole thing, I was very happy with the boys. Mm -hmm. They do cola, do the karangala, the skills karangkang. Don't like their suffering yeah. because deportation will be kungkang and they live in anxiety. Because yeah. that time for six years, they book a fin to just baturolaje, waiting, waiting, and waiting. So we need to get the German government to really engage the German government. The German government of policy is deportation. The government should promote a policy of integration. Integrate these boys into German society. Germany needs 500,000 workers every year. Hmm. Otherwise, the you know, welfare system will collapse. Like that. Yeah. We have only 16,000 in baden, baden Württemberg. Why can't they just uh, give integrate these boys them. training and integrate them? Yeah. We are not ready to receive these boys. We don't have institutions. We don't have the, the, the jobs. We don't yeah. have the social services. Uh, what we can do is to prevent now to stop Mm -hmm. It's from happening by investing in young people so they stay. But maybe they already, the least the Germans can do is to help them integrate back into German society. Other the Syrians, Nigerians, well, they, the way they treat infant those people can tell government it. Yes, and also the German integration policy is a big uh, a problem. So government needs to really go and really help these boys, uh, especially in terms of Ilakati Kodal, yeah, regulate because it's difficult to see Imalong when they be in Gambia. Yeah. So I've seen that first hand. I went to their home to home, just to know exactly what's happening. Uh, so that when I come, I'll engage government to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They say, look, let's engage the Germans and see what we can do, to be honest, for these boys. Because most of them, they come in for among sense. me. can't find out what they do. They have a biometric passport. I can't ask me biometric. No, I mean, biometric passport. I don't know what they do. They have biometric means they have a biometric detail. How can I be so long? It's a man of Gambia. They got a fellow Molly out of it. But your biometric details should be there. Yeah. So they are in a dilemma. They don't know what to do and they don't know where to go to. They don't know who's going to help them. And some of these guys, some, I saw girls as young as 18, 19, in a high multi, sitting there with men, six, seven years. A lot of them do, we do, we do, we do, we do, do, we do, do, we start. We do, 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 you go get a passport of you now. One day you cannot then yeah, stop it in a and they go underground. I, it's, it's really painful and government is not doing anything for them. It's really sad. I think this is really sad. And, and, and you, would, you can also even um, associate it with this with the high crime in the country. Because mm -hmm. you know, 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 you there were some who were in prison, they were calling us and we were through the branch. And once made the comment, me alanko, me nina buka nina alako, nalye ni sonte yin tol dipot na, nin tol nata nambi, alka crime fun, tol be crime kelo banko ka, yin nata. Ta, 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 you see these young Gambians, me alanko, to be honest, it's, it's sad. It's sad. Fonsi, Fonsi, And there is no institutional support from Gambia. Um, the only people supporting them, is the people they call the helpers. On a German or Mialonko, they are volunteers who are working with us. language, la, ke makwe, and get government, la, la. apart from war. Among any support, less they get confused, they get lost. Sometimes they start to get frustrated and, and their life is wasting. And Ghana government, we don't even know what their strategy is. Because when you go to negotiate with the Germans, you go with a strategy. Yeah. So you know what, Germany, your policy is deportation. We said, no, we cannot accept because X, Y, Z, we want you to pursue this policy. And there's a common ground, so they negotiate based on our interest. Mm -hmm. But until whatever the Germans say, you have a high start to aid. How can we left, leave ourselves in a situation where we go to the country? We go to the country and we go to the country. Pakistan. Pakistan. We got 10 tons of rice. We go to the country. 100. We go to the country. We go to the country. We go to the country. The country, 56 years of age, 56 <laughs> years old. When the Chinese are here, making millions of dollars from, from our, our fish, fish resources, yep. taking our fish, turning it into powder, 
to go feed their fish in their fish farms. Yeah. Well, I don't told you be made And mm -hmm. if I was born elsewhere, I would have been taller than this. Yeah. Because the average Gambian, the average Gambian height in them of mom is equal for the man. You know what I'm saying? So obviously, because you have nutrition, you don't need to go to the doctor. Every day, 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 every Anu wala kita rendu wala kita kentola headline ulit. Neng independensi itu yang ada yang ada celebrate. Aku kau tu mian 57 years. Iman fengkian ni file every body kata kick basang. Iko na bab dia nangas celebrate. Na bangko be wala ni. Na bangko be wala ni. Alah lain. Anis esa situation. Ah, belum ini nanti na. Belum ini dua hari ada. This is not the last matter. Ibu ni fikir doktor ye. Bukan semua abrak ni mau hidup ni. Ini mau hidup ni kita nanti na. It's sad. It's sad. But I hope Gambia government can do any something about it. Kami dua rekfat bolong ko. Kamu nak kerot alai oke. Alai oke. Isi bangko ni ni. Bangko la kerot ni tu. Ida fangola kerot ni je. Ni antara ente ismail si sembah bangko ni ni kang ngalung ko ninga soto. Ati yuruwa fira nang aning kerot sabat ilam Allah kala. Uh, Among science men kept not on quoti, you are man soto, sabato man soto. Honey, so I am dinning on Katai, Bamalki, Sambaton, Tibul Katad, Suta Dani, Rola for Suba, Honey, we care in. I don't want to be president. Yeah. Uh, but Niatara Ko, Fat Ture Naketa President, you are Binale, Sabato Eke, Dinning will be Karambong Soto, Musole, Tata Kenda, Bunda Tama, Funinka Duko Soto, Naja Bato, I'll support you 100%. Yeah. You don't have to be president to make change. Yeah. Ntonga Mino had a man on Anini, Tonya Kang. Silo kang, engkana buli afo, engkana mau kerja fik, engkana mau tuanya, engkana mau neng, aje ni. Dan bar minbo asoto lah. Wo mu atam mule bulu anik ala. An mukamin dua orang kami muna kairo di ala oke. Nada rana kairo be oli lebalako, nada nada nyata rabe kela. Ndobi lafta wola Gambia. There's no point ke ida mai enjoy. No, 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 no. There's no point. There's no point. Fadil bela ni ada. Bukan nada doktor Malay lali. In terms of because right now it's pillar to post. Right, they're going to be the first to post. <laughs> first passport, <laughs> first passport. Well, first passport. Well, not not first one anymore. Is there any talks? Coalition. Yeah, for a coalition. <laughs> Is there, there if there's no talks right now, is there a possibility of see, uh, getting into a coalition with any Install new them enjoy. I'm not part of the coalition. Bugu masa, ma ba politics mo wagen na. If I see a genuine coalition, bo amne do am betrayal. Agenda is right. Then it's a transformation. We are here to talk and explore those possibilities and see what we can do to change the country. Can anyone look at it? He didn't see elo munda change the kabi. He didn't see any so work with like-minded parties to change the country. What government needs now is a serious people. You muna change the kabi. Lo le ni Gambia. Mungkin kena hidup dalam makode. Muna ni kan presiden. Muna si Demtara. What's the point of being president? But if I see a genuine team bo hamne, ni deka deka dia genuine. Deka deka Gambia ni gis. Deka deka fen ne kusi. Na hati ne kusi ni they are really genuine. Amne a framework bo correct. Amne agenda bo nyam de nyonen. So nyonen religi start. Gambia muna change. The even speaking as a man ni kan bodyguard. Kino jeda sa, abi di bodyguard. Limau tu mana? 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 Si yang ke, yang ke wah aku hamil sa nyobul. Mungkin, mungkin yang lam lah minyak. Si yang ke wah nyobul. Tu bukan es. Mana tu mako? 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 Uh, there are some policies and values but they will converge, mm -hmm. but overall, there are policies that will converge. Mm -hmm. So, Boku, in fact, so Boku, but the issue is money right now at the top level. Mm -hmm. There is no negotiations or talk whatsoever at the back channel or front channel with any pilot in terms of coalition. Okay. But, like I said, Nun Gambling Bugamujim Kanam. If the framework is right, the agenda is correct, it is genuine. Yeah. You have it can bring meaningful change. We'll take part in the discussions and see from your job. See if I can attack now. We'll give a number of like Tepa can you enjoy Bob? Because of the whole Moduga politics. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much, Oli. Good night to you all. See you next week. Bye bye. and stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services 
Customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs, provided by professional, experienced and ever-smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Gumsel data, now even better. Enjoy 20% extra data on all Gumsel data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gumsel data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yaibor menu and choose your data bundle now. Gumsel data is fast. Last longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yai Borong.